You know, there are a lot of end-time uh, preppers and survivalists who believe that at some point in time that there is going to be a group that's going to rise up and uh, known as the Illuminati who are steering this world toward a one-world government who will one day elect some type of antichrist. Some people think that they're a part of this uh, future one-world government group that uh, is made up of prominent leaders in the world, kings, uh, celebrities, politicians, and men of wealth. And they believe that uh, the Illuminati, or the members of the Illuminati, have infiltrated every level of society worldwide, including high-ranking officials in uh, virtually every government. And, of course, that includes the United States. And speaking of the United States, they believe that the all-seeing eye that you'll find on the back of the dollar uh, is their secret symbol that uh, proves that they are running the U.S. government. Now, within this society, it's made up of three different classes. The first class is known as the nursery, and I won't go into any of the other details. It says the second class is the Mason Masonic grades, and, of course, the third class is the mysteries. Now, it's through these three classes that the world will one day be ruled. Now, at this time, the uh, Illuminati is a secret organization because back in uh, the late 1800s, or late, or late 1700s, it was outlawed uh, and was supposedly at that time disbanded. Now, as I said earlier, speaking of the New World Order, the New World Order and the Illuminati are not the same thing. But the truth of the matter is they both uh, seek to control the matters of the world, including what will one day culminate into selecting a leader known as the Antichrist. But one thing that is for sure is that the Illuminati is um, believed by many, and I'm talking tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and maybe even more. If you go to some of the uh, websites that do promote the existence of the Illuminati, you'll find that they have hundreds of thousands of s subscribers uh, and followers. Many of them also are preppers. In other words, they are getting themselves ready for the final day when uh, there will be some type of government takeover. Well, you know, now we've, that we've heard what man's description is of what they believe is going to be the final government that will eventually elect and select a, uh, an antichrist, what does the Bible actually have to say about the Illuminati? Now, speaking about the uh, Antichrist and his rise in the last days in Revelation chapter 17, verse 10, and reading it says, And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And that's just talking about the history of the Antichrist. And it says, And the kingdoms that have, have, have fallen before him. And it says, And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is, the, is the, of the seven, uh, and goeth into perdition. And the ten kings which thou sawest are ten kings, which have uh, received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power, or lend it, and, st and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords and the king of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So this is the picture of the last uh, uh, organized government that will uh, be in power just before the Lord comes back. And if you want to call them the Illuminati or whatever the case may be, you can call them uh, that. But the bottom line is, is there will be no celebrities. There will be no high-ranking politicians or rich men or whomever you may think uh, will be a part of this, uh, this last days group. The bottom line is, is that the Bible is clear. It says that the last days group will be 10 kings who will make up this... Uh, last day's government who will lend their power to the Antichrist and they will certainly rule for a short time. And the Bible says in Revelation chapter 13 verse 4 that nobody in the world will be able to stop the Antichrist and his ten kingdom empire and that uh, the, only, the only way that he would have been able to, uh, to be overcome is through the blood of the Lamb. In other words, Jesus himself will have to overthrow the Antichrist. Don't look for any type of worldly kingdom to come to the rescue and to defeat the Antichrist because with Satan indwelling the Antichrist and he will be in charge and no nation, no uh, conglomerate of nations will be able to stop him or defeat him. And as I've said many times, if it weren't for the fact that the Lord is going to come back and defeat this world uh, empire and throw down Satan and the Antichrist, now let's not forget about the false prophet. If it weren't for the Lord coming back to defeat this uh 
unholy trinity, this world would be perpetually and forever uh, ruled by Satan. And you know, the one thing I hear time and time again from people who are trying to try to bring in the human element of the, the last days and how it will be ruled and how this one world government will come about, the bottom line is, is that Satan will be at the head of this one world government. And let me read verse 4 of Revelation chapter 13. It says, And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? It doesn't say anything about the ten kingdoms. It doesn't say anything about powerful men or celebrities or politicians. In fact, what should blow your mind is the fact that they're saying in verse 4, the Bible says in verse 4, it says, And they worship the dragon. This will be a very supernatural time in which Satan will literally be worshipped. It will be a, a time unlike any time you've ever seen or heard of. You know, as I've said uh, in the past, that there's going to be, the, you know, during this time of the tribulation period, angels are going to be flying through the air saying, don't worship the beast, but worship God. The two witnesses are going to be doing miracles in Jerusalem, stopping the rain from coming down, turning the water into blood. People will try to kill the witnesses, and they, by, by how they try to kill them, uh, they will be killed. You know, this will be a time in which two men will hold the whole world captive, and they will have to listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ for the first three and a half years. You know, one thing you need to come to grips with, and this is right here, is that the first three and a half years is going to be a time which God is trying to say, come worship me, accept my son Jesus as your Savior. And when they reject that, or when those who do reject it, reject it, then they're going to believe the lie of Satan when he comes and says that, hey, I am God, worship my representative, and give homage and worship me as well. And the bottom line is, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, it says, and all, the, all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. You know, all these Illuminati's and uh, New World Order type websites, they've got it all wrong. When the end of the world comes, when the tribulation period starts, this is not going to be a man-made experience that's going to take place. This is going to be a supernatural horrifying experience that the world simply won't be able to fathom. In fact, the Bible says that men will die of fear and fright because of the, what's coming upon them. But today we live in a world that is trying to humanize something that the Bible says that you simply can't humanize. And I think that's really what's wrong with much of the prophetic world today is they've tried to humanize as much as possible as how, the, uh, uh, how in the world uh, this world could go from democracy, at least a portion of it anyway, to being ruled by one man as a dictator. And they've almost got it in to, to looking like something out of uh, the days of Caesar, where he attempted to rule the world and declared himself to be a god. Now that was a man-made experience, but the world that we are about to embark upon during the tribulation period will be every, anything but that type of experience. Where Caesar did, uh, maybe some of his closest people, he did uh, make them call him a god. The Antichrist will have worldwide power in which everyone will actually see him as a god. And frankly, they'll have reason to. He will do miracles in and of himself. And speaking of that, uh, verse 13 of that same chapter 13 says, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And verse 14 says, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those great miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying, that, uh, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by the sword and did live. Now, you know, a lot of people believe that what they're talking about here is that at some point in time that the Antichrist is going to die and then he's going to be brought back to life. And, you know, I'm not going to argue whether or not Satan has the power to bring back uh, someone or himself from, uh, back from the dead. But he will have whatever power the Lord will grant him during that time. Just as when Jesus sent out the 12 apostles to heal the sick, raise the dead, back in the first uh, coming of Christ, uh, even Judas, who was one of the 12, said that he, uh, he was one of the ones who said that he had done all the miracles that the others had done. So they were all given that type of, of uh, power uh, as they went out. But the point is, is that this is going to be a very supernatural time period with the likes of which this world has not seen before. 
And yes, if you do believe that there will be some type of group of, of uh, world rulers or whatever the case may be, uh, if you want to call them the Illuminati, that's fine. But the Bible says that these ten nations will gather together and give and lend their power to the Antichrist. And if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. You know, 150,000 people die every single day. The Bible says that the vast majority will end up in a burning hell. Don't let that happen to you. Come to the Lord today. Let him save you. And there's no special prayer that you have to say or whatever the case may be. Uh, you just say, Lord, come to my heart. Save me. I believe that you died on the cross for me. Forgive me of my sins. And from this day forward, I want to live for you. And in a nutshell, that's what you've just done. You've just turned your life over to the Lord. You know, the thief on the cross just said one simple thing, and that is, remember me, Lord, when you come into your kingdom. He didn't say any special prayer, but God, but the Lord knew exactly what he meant. And you Christians, you know that at some point in time that you are going to be raptured. And when you do, what will become of your lost friends and loved ones and family members? You know, I recommend that you get them a copy of my free Tribulation Period Survival Guide. You can find the uh, link to that in the upper left-hand corner. Get them a copy of this because if you let them learn from what the world is going to tell them, they're going to take the mark of the beast and they're going to worship the Antichrist. You know, I also have a paid version that you can literally hand to them. Uh, go down to my description section and you will be able to get a paperback version of this same book. And I recommend that you get this to them as quickly as possible. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.